Hello everyone, Wynjo here, and welcome back to the adventures of Sultan Jafar. Now last episode we only did one turn in the game, but we managed to fit a lot into that turn. Not only were we able to take the dwarven capital of Karak Zorn down here in the mountains, but we were also able to take on the Wakaf dynasty here in the Black Tower of Arken, defeating them completely and taking the region for ourselves. As a result as well of taking the Black Tower, we had a foothold in the province here, meaning that we were able to buy both the Pools of Despair and Bel Aliad from the prospectors. And if you remember, one particularly good thing with the Bel Aliad is that if we hover over the landmark buildings, we can get our hands on the Portal of Twilight, which allows us to recruit Chaos units. Now, I had a look at the end of the episode just to see about what I would need again for this. And as you guys saw, I did make a bit of a cock up. In order to build this, we do actually need to get the top tier, this build in here, the Grand Yazir. That'd be a better way to show you guys. And I accidentally deleted it and demolished it in the previous turn. So we're going to have to try and rebuild it. But the thing that I noticed is if we hover over these, the Gardens of El Aliad and the Port of Twilight, we can only build, I think, either one or the other. Now, if that's going to be the case, and I do think it is, because you can notice the big red thing that says only one building of this category can be built in each settlement, I'm going to go for the Port of Twilight. I think it'd be much cooler to get Chaos units than it is just to get a few bonuses from the Gardens. So... In order to build this, we need to rebuild our slave market. So, if we pop onto here, we'll get our hands on slave traders. It will take a few turns, but that's fine. We'll just have to deal with that. Now, while we're going to do that, I'm going to send Reza Azem, our Beastmaster General, to head back to our hack so we can recruit the rest of his army. Now, one of the viewers, Alvo Rio, had suggested a very good formation with nothing but monster and monstrous creatures in it, with the exception of another character. So I'm going to follow that because it looked pretty deadly. I'm looking forward to giving it a go. But we'll, we'll sort that out in the next turn when he gets back and we can take advantage of global recruitment as well, just in case we need to use it to get things done a bit more quickly. But... The main thing we do need to sort out is the dwarf situation down here. Now the dwarves have no other territory, so as you can see they're currently taking attrition and our army is not in the best state thanks to actually taking the capital and defeating the army in it. So this guy is the one leading the siege, so it's going to take absolute ages for them to actually build any siege equipment if that's what they're going to try and do. This guy here has got a few units. They do have long beards and stuff like that, but to be honest, I honestly think we can take them on. So what I'm thinking is, just get straight into the fight. So if we go and counter-siege them, in fact, we'll make it a little bit easier thinking about it. What I've got in mind is, don't forget, we just had Baba available to us um, here. I'm going to get him to go and attack that army here. Now, would it be better to go and assault the units or go after a character? I think... Let's see if we can take out that level 11 Fane. If this works, fantastic. It will make our fight a bit easier. But if not, I think he just did it. He got a follower. Success, fantastic news. Alright, we'll skip through all of that. We'll level him up afterwards. But, let's go and do the fight. Can I just auto resolve this? Yeah, I think we're going to do that. The doors weren't much of a challenge. I'm not going to grace them with actually trying to f finish them off in battle. But I'm quite happy with that 5,000 gold. Wow. We will just execute the captives. The faction is now completely destroyed. I'm quite happy with that. Skip through all of these. Anything else? Okay, good. Now, we have 30,000 gold to spend. We are making a fortune right now. So, in a way, we are actually coming near to the end goal for this campaign. So, especially with something I'll talk about actually during the end turn phase. For the moment, let's just spend our money. So, we can't do much in the way of recruiting right now. Jafar is going to take a couple of turns to replenish. So, let's have a quick look. What do we need to spend, basically? 
We're still focusing on our wealthiest place first of all, with the land of the dead, giving us 7,000. Wow. Coast of Avaby is all well and good. Land of Assassins, we can upgrade this. Land of Dervishes. Sudenburg, don't forget, we can't actually build the port, so that's unfortunate. Um, but we can't build that. We, I'm not worrying about the walls yet. Right, we'll try and get other stuff first. So that's fine. Black Tower of Arkham, we're building sealed version. We're going to stick with trying to get money from this region, which I think is our best bet. We'll go for this. Although... Do we need anything to actually recruit the Chaos Warriors once we get this? It just says buildings required in settlement. It doesn't say we need to get like the um, armory and things like that. Although it could be in handy, but no, we're not going to exactly be building tons and tons of them, are we? Now we'll just go for focus on economy then, I think. So I will go for caravan stop because this does give a bit of income over time. We can upgrade that as well. And for you, we've really got the slave traders. Let's actually give you a paved road, just to try and help things out a bit. It doesn't matter if we... not. It's your major settlement, you know? But yeah, we'll keep that going for the moment. We've got the gold mine, don't forget. Okay, Ash River. Let's upgrade this, this, and this. Okay, Bagar. As tempting as it is to actually try and upgrade Bagar, I kind of want to build Castlebar up because don't forget, this is the place where we can get our hands eventually on necromancers, which could be quite cool if we can fit that in in the campaign. So we'll just leave that for the moment thing and keep the points. All right, lastly, anything else? Yeah, sure, we'll do that quickly. Okay, Shifting Sands were done. That's being done. That's been done, and up here now. Right, we'll get that, that, and that. Fantastic. Right. Baba, I'm going to get you hard to hit for the moment, and we'll hit the end turn. Now, left that on from last time, but... The reason why I wanted to take a minute to talk about the end goal is because at this point in the campaign, we are basically a critical mass, as was succinctly put in the comments of the last episode. We're in a position now where not really any, really none of the factions are going to be able to fight us, especially as we have more than enough money to build up more armies should we want to. So, at this point, it will just be a steamrolling operation. We will just be able to march down south, take out the lizard men, and things like that. But that's okay, because I don't know if you guys saw, but earlier today on the Total War channel, they had a little video pop up, right? It was only like 40 seconds, and all it really was was a picture of a nice forested area with a single arrow pointing into a log on the floor. Now, since we know the next DLC for Warhammer 2 is going to be focused on the Wood Elves, that sign shows me that it might be coming up in the next few weeks. So, I'm quite happy to continue the campaign up until the DLC. It means we can actually try out our forces against the mighty Lizardmen down in the south, as well as Kalador, I Dragon Tamer. Sorry, Imwick, the Dragon Tamer, since he's got his territory down here right next... Where is it, actually? One second. There it is. The Northern Red River's here in Sexerto. We have down here, yeah, their capital. So we could just go down, capture the rest of the continent, and then just end things there. I think that would be a good point for us. So that's going to be the plan. We're just going to finish the campaign in when the DLC comes out, or when we take the entire continent, whatever happens first. Now, since we're in a good position right now to... Just deal with a few manage manageable things, recruit this army and stuff like that. I'm going to time skip forward a little bit. I have just a few turns unless anything pops up. That way then we can be in a good position to continue the campaign. So see you guys in a bit. So guys, welcome back. Now it's been a few turns since the last cut, as you may have noticed down here from the turn count. Uh, just enough really for us to finish recruiting the monster army and start bringing it down south, ready for us to start our next part of the campaign. 
Now I'm still trying to keep Orion's camp on my side as much as possible, which is turning out to be a little difficult because I'm basically keep bribing them. But every time that I do, I mean, you can see here, we've got 44 points for gifts and treaties. They just do not seem happy with the fact that I am a great power. So every time I give them a bunch of money and they're going to go, oh yeah, we'll have a relationship plus 50, the next turn, it drops back down again. So not much I can try and do about that, which is annoying because I kind of want to buy the uh, Last Plateau from them rather than having to fight them. Oh, that actually helped. Wow. Last time, they didn't, for the past couple of turns, they have been unwilling to accept military access. So that should hopefully boost things up a little bit. And because we got the cash right now, I shall offer you another large gift. Maybe that will help, maybe it won't. Who knows? But... Once we skip through, oh, we've done giants, fantastic. All right, let's jump through those. Now, what I want to do now is actually declare war on the, well, Kalador, the Order of the Dragon Lord. Now, unfortunately, I don't know where Imric is. He's not leading his army here. And as far as I can tell, that's the, their only army. So it's annoying, but what can you do? But uh, once we've dealt with them quickly, I would like to actually go after the children of Talakwa. So that will be our next major campaign will be against these guys. But I'm trying to remember. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Let's go back down here a minute. Right, these guys are actually in a military alliance with the Bowmen of Orion, which is a problem. And our former partner in order to declare war on people, the Top Knots tribe has been defeated. So, we're not... we don't actually know about Warlord Clan Moors yet, but we have encountered the Forces of Hag Grief. So I'm wondering if we could use that to our advantage. I do want to just quickly check as well. What about you guys? Okay, you're actually the defensive alliance of the last defenders of Zartor. But no one else. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. We can deal with that. So I kind of want to get someone down here in position first. So we do have... Where is he? Here. Ibn Arabas is currently making his way down to Antok. But if we can just move him... Oh, that's their territory. Why? That's theirs. How am I... Can I not actually physically get to here without trespassing? Fine. If we have to trespass the Serbian fact, no, hang on, hang on. We've got military access now with the Bowmen of Orion. So that doesn't matter. We can just walk past and go after them. And we'll attack them with Alabas in the next turn. Here it is, by the way, our monster army. We've got two genies, two behemoth scorpions, eight war elephants, two giants, and four Kimar Anars. So we've got a good flying support, a very good front line of heavy monsters, as well as being able to check out what the genies and I like, which would be pretty nice. But these guys are making their way down to Sudenburg so we can attack the plain of Tuskers with them. I mean, if we're fighting lizard men, what better army than to use a giant monster one? Barba is just exploring at the moment just to see what we've got to deal with, where we can spy enemy armies. We got Rinky here, for example. Talakwa, I believe. Sorry, Tic Tac Toe. I still can't get over his bloody name, Tic Tac Toe. That's got. That is definitely. You know, that's obviously a joke, right? But it does. It doesn't sit right, you know. Now, where did? Oh, you went. You were just here, right? Personally, we're in a good position. I might as well just sort it out now before they start running away. But. We'll stay close by. I want to just make sure we can eliminate them in one fell swoop. So you guys can come here. Now, technology. We're still trying to sort out the... In fact, we'll go for this one, the Liber Malefique. Ooh, Giselles, maybe. No, we'll go for that. Because right, we need it in order to do the Suffrage of Chaos. Now, in terms of here, we've just finished building the Slave Market. So we've got four more turns to go. And then we can deal with that. We'll upgrade you as well. Oh, and I've also got, by the way, if I head over to Le Chic, because we got the palace there, I'm recruiting a fourth army with a ton of Arabian guards to start things off. And you can see we're already at level 7, which is fant really, really good. I have to stop saying the word fantastic. It reminds me of one of the students I work with. Ugh. Anyway, let's skip that and hit enter. 
and we should hopefully be able to defeat the Dragon Prince himself in the next turn. Right then, in that turn, nothing to report, but once I pop through all of these, thank you, I just wanted to point out this Minotaur Lord, right? He's got such a cool name, put it through a blood breath. If only I can get a Beast Lord as, with a, such a cool name as that, when I do eventually play as Beastmen on the channel. But uh, that's not going to be happening right now. Hang on, do I want to send Jafar after him? Yeah, we still want to do that. Right, let's sort out Kalator. So we speak to Hag Grief. Malice Darkblade really, really doesn't like us. Why? Oh, because of all the treaties we've got. Right, fair enough. Alright, but wonder if you're still willing. Let me join your war against the children or the Dragon Lord. No. What? Fine. What happens if I join your war and I'm going to pay you a, a nice tedious and sum of money? Thank you. That's what I wanted. Now that we've done that, let's go down now with Jafar, kill off their army, and then hopefully go after their capital in the following turn. Thank you. Goodbye. Right. Oh, we can actually get slaves now. Finally. We've been fighting so much undead and things like that and goblins and that. We haven't been able to get many slaves and they've been diminishing over time. So now, there we go. And we picked up the Berserker Sword as well. Cool. Right. You can start making your way over to here. You. Oh, hang on. You're still in Force March. I thought I took you off there. We might just about be able to reach it. <laughs> right. Take it. Ooh. Okay. Silver Helms. Loth and Sea Guard. It doesn't. Ha oh, it does have walls. Oh, let's be honest. <laughs> you have no right. Right, demand offerings, take the gold, take the more slaves. Loot and occupy. There we go. Faction has been destroyed. That was nice and easy, wasn't it? Alright. We'll take that. Yeah, we'll take that. Demolish that for the moment. I want to check to see, first of all, did we get... We don't get any fancy new buildings for this. Well, that's a shame. I now can't see what the Sun Tree Glades on a Hontal is, unless we can pop onto here. I just want to see if they've got any resources. Here has wood, but tim or timber, but timber isn't exactly that big a deal. And they haven't got any unique landmarks, so probably we're not going to be able to use this for much. I might end up just using it as a recruitment zone for us to use while we're down here. But we shall see. We shall see. For the moment, let's grab you. I'm going to try and avoid going to war against the last defenders of Zotor until we've dealt with the children of Talakwa. So if we get you guys to start heading over towards here, I'm not at this point really not fussed if we end up trespassing in their territory. But if we can sneak in and take their capital at Talakwa, that will help us out. But. Save Barba, let's give you heart of hits. You've been doing quite well with that so far. You will have finished off all his spells now. I'm going to let him keep the flying carpets, because that's to me a little bit more useful. We'll go for evasion. Hashim Ibn al-Mustafa, we've given you the barded white horse, just because I want to make sure he can do something. And that makes a variety of amount, rather than an elephant, you know? So, I'm actually going to give you Foe Seeker for the minute. Alright. Ibn Alabas. Let's have a look. I have gone ahead, as you can see, and given him Lightning Strike recently, so that's going to be useful. I'm going to give you the Royal Armory to boost up my warriors in the army. And let's give you another point in Ramasfar. Extra armor piercing damage, basically double the bonuses. Sure. You can have your two turns you're going to need to replenish now at this point. Okay. Razor, we're going to actually get you to Force March a bit further down. I don't care if we're in their territory. We're just going to go and declare war on them in the following turn. So that's fine by me. Oh yeah. 
this could be an interesting thing of the monsters, eh? Especially with Tic Tac Toe being around. We're looking forward to trying them out against our army. <laughs> right, we've got two more turns until these guys are finished recruiting. We'll have an eight stack then. Supplement it with some more characters, some monsters. I think that could work, work out quite nicely. I like the idea of maybe doing a more traditional army with that one. So maybe less monsters, more, you know, palace and things like that. So we'll definitely be making sure to move them back to our hack in order to be able to do the recruit turn. Right, can't do much more with that. Just quickly have a look now to see what we can spend our money on, because we're getting so much of it right now. Uh, we'll upgrade the defences, I'm sure. Sudenberg still can't do anything, but we will give you walls. Can't do much with that. Right. Yeah, I have... Oh, we do have some... Uh, can we? Because I've recently upgraded that. Perishable Paralysis. Definitely want to be get my hands on that eventually. I'll tell you what, for the moment, let's go for the Hekaran Excavation, just because that will give us some gold. Already got that. Camel Riders, certainly, when the game will let me click on it. There we go. And let's get paved roads. Anything that's going to give us a nice little bonus, given that we're making nearly 80,800 80, from this province alone. Really contributing towards the income. Oh, we have an incursion we might have to deal with in the following turn. Oh well. I'll have to start bringing my prospector allies down here in order to try and help me out against the Tic Tac Toe and his children of Tulacqua. Okay, another turn. So let's get for all of these. We do have a new incursion like uh, in the Elven Ruins down here. Luckily we do have defences and they're pretty strong, so not really that fussed. But it might be handy to at least try and deal with them sooner rather than later, just in case. So I don't know, maybe we'll send these guys down once they've recruited a bit, or even just ask my allies to come down and deal with them on my behalf. Now bear in mind... Hang on, I could have swore blind. There used to be a way you can just ask him to do it on here. I mean, no matter. We'll just do it this way if needed. Right, so click... Excuse me. Uh... Prospectors. Why can I not set a war target? Oh, because apparently we're not at war with them. And we're not at war with these guys. But we must be at war because they're all rebels. I have no idea. Anyway, we'll deal with that. We'll deal with that. For the moment then, what we'll do is we'll declare the war. We'll go after the Plain of Tuskers with Reza Assem here. And then we'll swing around through the coast in order to go after the Elven Ruins. We'll send Jafan in to go after Sun Tree Glades. Assuming he can hit to this turn. We just about reach it. Alabas can continue to rest up, and then we'll have him march down there, maybe towards Nahotl, now that it's been recently done by uh, Malus Darkblade. Yeah, let's just check our alliance so far. 41. Okay, I'm quite happy with that. Gonna give you another bribe. Things we're doing, just to try and ensure this, so we can just buy a region. Nice, right, 61. That should work out. So we've done that now. Now let's have a look now on you guys. We have encountered the Man Blight tribe and I believe we're actually on relatively good terms with these guys. Or not. 102 and counting. Okay, Tawox. Are you willing to let me join your war against them? You are. That's what I want to see. I mean, Tarwax might be a dumb brute, but he's smart enough to not turn down allies when needed, eh? But, you can deal with that. Let's get you to come over here and deal with the Sutton Tree Glades. I know we've got an army inside here, it seems, but I think we should be able to take them out. Grave time. Oh yeah, definitely. I'm surprised the Bands Bar is that much in my favour, considering what we've got against us. I mean, they've got, here, look, a Bastardon with solar engines, right? They've got over here an ancient Stegodon, right? Feral Carnosaurs, they even got one of these guys. Oh, Christ, what are their names? 
I know they're Quoxagors, but there's the fancy name for them because they're a Lord character. Oh, that's going to bug me. Just let me know in the comments if you can remember, guys. Save me after the read it up, but we'll do that. There we go. Close victory. Just going to go ahead and occupy it. Picked up the Tormentor Sword again. All right. There we go. Sentry Glades is now ours. Now for here... Let's get defenses, just to help things out a little bit there. You can rest up and then we'll get you in fact. I'm going to take the slight risk. I'm going to actually move you down here. We've got 100% ambush, right? So if we move you down to here... We still get the replenishment because they're in our friendly territory and I can set up an ambush so they don't know we're making our way down to there. And then if I grab Reza... Let's have a look see how the balance bar says here. This one's a lot more uncertain. I kind of want to fight it though. Just so we can check out all these cool monsters in combat. So yeah, we're going to do exactly that. See you guys down there. Welcome everyone to the battlefield. Now I decided to start things off in slow motion because I just wanted to check out for you guys in particular as well some of the monstrous creatures we haven't seen yet on the map, in particular the genies and the giants. So while I set things up first of all you can see here we've gone for a standard formation for me, a front line of war elephants, we've got our Kimar in the back ready to swoop round when needed, and on each flank we've got a behemoth scorpion, a genie and a giant. In fact, if we just zoom in right up close, you can check out the Giants first of all. Very, very cool. And don't forget, I recently finished that research back on the main map, which allows us to gain them a bit cheaper cost, as well as be able to get a few more bonuses. So that's pretty handy. And then we've got our Genies. Now Genies are pretty cool because they're like a combined version of the fire inputs and the desert spirits in the fact that they can actually use both fireballs and sandstorms as a spell and they can also once they get into combat for 40 seconds unleash a chain lightning spell which is quite cool now it's only one use only but it's handy it's quite handy now at this point of the battlefield though, I'm starting to move my troops up. We're only taking our time to get there because I don't want them to tire out. But we are getting shot at already because the Stegodon over here does have the giant crossbow on the back. So that's taking a few shots at us. And then over here, I decided to try and blast the Cold One Spear Riders because I know from my own experience that Cold One Spear Riders can be quite deadly against monstrous creatures if you're not careful. So, I sent a freezer fireballs that way and I sent one over towards the Stegodon to do a bit more damage. But, at this point, the enemy is coming towards us, so I'm speeding up a bit and charging into them. I'm sending elephants in all different directions, we've got arrows firing already just in case. And I already sent two Kamar units over to the right flank, two more over on the left, ready to try and go after some of the enemy. Now, for example, the Kamars are going over the Source Warriors right here. But in other places we've got just a battle of monsters. You can see this feral carnosaur taking on the war elephant in combat. And according to the balance bar, we should be winning decisively. But because it's rampaging, it's not going to be that good a fight for us. Now over here we've got things like the skin cohorts getting involved. We've got the feral bastilodon taking on the war elephant and the giant. It's just a whole mess of monsters everywhere. Now this was an interesting thing, we got Tic-Tac-Toe and another Skin Priest over here. What was his name again? Korkendorf. Okay, sure. But these guys are taking out the Kamar and unfortunately it's not going to be in much in our favour. But we are trying to balance things out elsewhere. We've got, as you can see, one giant, a war elephant over here. We've got my genie and a behemoth scorpion taking out a, a carnosaur. Now at this point though, the, uh, the scorpion is actually going to start a treat in a minute, so that's unfortunate. One of those things though, I have to get used to actually using monsters in terms of our units instead of just using infantry in that. But the reason why I'm sending over our Sheik back here is because my uh, wizard got caught up by the spear riders that ran away from the fight they were originally in. So I've sent him back in to try and help the situation. 
We've got a Bastilodon trying to help out, but since a giant to come and deal with him. Unfortunately now we've got one of my elephants retreating away from this other Stegodon. We are quite an old number of them quite a bit, and you can see this one's about to be defeated any second. But yeah, it's been interesting using the monsters in the fight. We got the genie though doing some good damage against the source warriors right here. I'm sending in the behemoth scorpion originally to try and help out a bit, but I must have got caught up on the source warriors. No problem at all though. Over here now we've got some more going on. The Kamar are doing quite well against the infantry units. They already dealt some damage to the source warriors and now going after the skinks. We've got an example over here now of the chain lightning that the genie right over here unleashed. And unfortunately it didn't hit too many of the enemies but they've taken a few casualties so I'm quite happy with that. Over here we had the unfortunate thing. One of my Kamar have actually been defeated completely. This one has nearly been wiped out. But luckily it survived and Tic-Tac-Toe and that have already started to do a runner. In fact, Tic-Tac-Toe, I believe, has come over here to fight the genie. Now luckily for me, genies have got armor piercing as well as inferior in terms of their armor. In fact, they actually... oh no, they don't actually have any armor, fair enough. But it does mean though that they last quite a long time in combat. But at this point, the battle is now ours. A decisive victory and given that it is a siege assault I decided to not bother chasing them down and went straight back to the campaign map and that's what we're going to do right now. So a decisive victory but I personally thought that was an interesting thought experiment. I've never actually gone with a army before which is composed of monsters so having an army with just 20 models in the entire one was quite interesting and bear in mind that these are monsters they're not heroes so if I had an army of heroes I think they could have lasted a bit you know better but I was pretty alright with that we lost one of our Kamar which was fighting tic-tac-toe and one of the other uh, skink commanders but yeah one casualty out of 20 and we managed to kill 989 I'll take that we will, of course, go and occupy the settlement, I think, this time. Thank you, game. Oh, and we defeated Tic-Tac-Toe as well, giving us extra movement range and line of sight. Fantastic. And I know, I just said I should stop saying that. Right. But anyway. Can we recruit another monster quickly? Unfortunately not. It takes about four turns at the minimum to get another character. But I mean, we are going to be waiting at least, say, two, three turns in order to get our health back, especially for some of the more injured creatures. So an extra turn I don't think is any big deal. I mean, bear in mind that we did want to swing back in order to go after the Nehekaran rebels here. You know what? It, no, it's fine, it's fine. We will get our hands on another command just to keep the balance up. But yeah, I'm pretty happy with this episode so far. We are in a position now to go after Nanhanto. We've got Talakwa itself to deal with. We've defeated Tic Tac Toe. We've eliminated the Dragon Order of Kalador from he the map. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with all of this. I trust no man. Right. You're there. You're still recruiting. You've got your monsters to deal with. Let's level everybody up. So let's see, you can go over to the Statues of the Gods, just to sort the garrison for me, see what I they've got. Agree. Failure. It's okay, you can learn from your mistakes. I wonder if Malice might be more on my side now because of this. Or if we may have to go back to the Bowmen. Okay, it's plus 55 because we are at war with them. They're not that fussed about the fact that we are at war with them, I'm quite happy about that. Can we get the prospectors to come in quickly and join in our war. I mean, we've got a... Okay, we, I was going to say, we have a really good relationship with them, but they condemn the fact we've got minus 40 for technology. Interesting. Okay, join my war against the children of Tlarkoi, please. Thank you. That should actually boost up our relationship a bit as well, because we've got a mutual enemy now to deal with. Okay, here in the Shifting Sands... Let's go for Golden Age to try and get that public order sorted out. Plain of Tuskers, sure, we'll upgrade you now that we've got it. Reza Assem, this is the guy leading our monsters. Now, I was a little tempted, to be honest, to go for a magic user, 
But well, I'm doing that with our second uh, other army being recruited at Lashik at the moment. I am a little tempted though to go for Hardened by the Desert, just to increase the bonuses there for charging and stuff like that. Very handy for a mounted character, I would say. Uh, maybe a, that being the exception. But we'll give it a go and f let's find my monsters. Monsters, monsters, monsters. Oh, we don't actually have one for monsters. But I'll tell you what we can do. We can increase Desert Wind over time, especially if we're going for the Cataphract Armor. That's going to give us minus 12, but that's going to give us plus 9. So we will balance them out quite nicely and make the entire army faster as a result. But for the moment... Yeah, let's go for Unshakable Faith. We'll make sure to give him some weapons and that at some point as well. We've got plenty of gold, so I'll have to stop, uh, go shopping at the bazaar soon. But, yeah, and what I'm going to do with this guy, to be honest, while I do like the Winds of Heaven, I can't help but feel maybe it'd be better if we get our hands on a light, uh, I mean a life wizard, just to keep our health up during the battles. In fact, do I want to swap him out? Now, I always go for life wizards. I like them. I find them useful. So, no, let's try and stick to something a bit different again. I mean, I've got a whole monster army here. I can at least try and keep a Heaven's Wizard going at the same time, can't I? Right, but at that point, though, I think we're basically done. I haven't got any more... U I'm at this point now where I haven't got any more buildings, really, to recruit, apart from trying to get the final one here at Baraliad. But everything else has been pretty fully upgraded, really, or we're waiting for it to be upgraded. Like, just, just defences left to do here and there. Oh, there is a couple. There is a couple, and here in New Mass. We already got that. Let's go for that at this point. And we'll go for that just to get the extra income. We'll grab that as well. Alright, we'll do that as well here, can we? Alright, there we go, we can end the turn. Right then guys, we're going to leave it here for today. So once we get through all of these pop-ups, next episode we will continue our conquest of the lands belonging to the children of Talakwa. We've taken quite a bit of it already. Our next target then will be probably the children of Slatlan, or we could just swing across quickly and go after the last defenders along here. That could be pretty nice to do. But yeah, so far so good. I was a little annoyed though. <laughs> Malice Darkblade has burned down the statues of the gods. Maybe it's the daemon inside him that wasn't particularly um, excited or happy to see these statues. Probably remembering what happened when the daemons fought the lizard men all those many, 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 many years ago. But uh, yeah, that was annoying because that was a tier 3 settlement. But that's okay, that's okay. Right. We're now in a position to go after Tilakwa. We'll be able to take that in the next episode. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with how we're going to leave things here. So all we need left to do now, as well as adding the traditional units to this army here, I do want to try and get my hands, if possible, on the Chaos units we can recruit. That could be fun to try out. But yeah, a few things for Saturday. So let's end it here, guys. As always, thank you very much for watching today's one. I hope you did enjoy, and if you do join me next time, of course, for some more Warhammer. But until then, everybody, take care, stay safe, and goodbye for now.